grace is when I'm talking, you have to capture. Don't enter into the tradition of uh, he has to call me. He has to call the name of my disease. He has to lay hand on me. He has to kick me and push me until I fall down. And that's when I feel that I've received. No. I speak and God does it. Amen. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. Maybe from there, I, I want just to, I, I feel like I'll share with you this testimony. Uh, in uh, 1989, we were in South Africa. We went to Swaziland. We saw things there, incredible. So we went to South Africa. Um, how many people have ever heard of the Rema Church in South Africa? It's the lar largest. Uh, no. So I went, we were there, and they get me a suite with my wife and my uh, the little girl. Then uh, I'm lying in the bed. My wife and the little girl is washing the girl in the living room. Suddenly, I feel like somebody has entered. So I thought it's my wife. Uh, but I didn't see the person. But I see the person, I feel the person has entered. And the person went around with the bed, came and stood by the side. And that's my question, why do you preach? I said, why do I preach? I preach because I'm called. He said, you know. I said, what do you mean you know? He says, most of the time you preach for yourself. I said, what do you mean I preach for myself? He said, look on the wall. A screen appeared. And they begin to pass the meetings in front of me, live. It was not in a dream. It was live, I'm lying on the bed. It was not a vision. I just. He says, look at that meeting. You went to show that you know how to preach. Look at the result. Look at it, because in those days when we started the ministry, we were combated by everything. So we will do everything to be accepted. We will do everything to show well, I'm called, I'm anointed. So you, we didn't know that sometimes when we do like that, we go in flesh. So I go and he started passing the meetings. You said that meeting. You went for yourself. That means you went to show that you know how to, to you, how you are anointed. That means, and they look at the result, the very few things. Then he said, look at that meeting. You went for me. Look at what I did. Thousands of people getting saved. Miracles taking place. Look at that meeting. And conviction came upon me. I fell from the bed. And I began to cry. I said, Lord, I repent from today. I do only what you want me to do. I'll go only where you want me to go. Are you getting me? Only where you want me to go. He put his hand on my shoulder. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the thing that went in my body. Huh? I felt like I'm melting. Then he says, son, as of today, whatever you say, I'll do it. Amen. People ask me, why are you so humble? We saw knowledge, we saw anointing, you are just simple like that. I say, because you have not met him. When you meet him, you are not going to boss anything. Because you realize you are nothing. When you know him. Is anybody hearing me? So from that time I have crusade, I'll just speak. In the fire conference, I'll just speak. And the things happen. No, I don't think you're hearing me. I say things happen. The chairman of our fire conference is now in Dallas. He's going to come tomorrow to see me. The wife came to me. She had one tube removed. And the other tube is blocked. So she came. 
He said, you gave me echography. I look at this, what is this? He said, can you say, say, I don't know how to read that. I read Bible. <laughs> she said, one tube is gone and the other tube is blocked. I said, so what do you want? He said, I want a baby now. I said, go. Go and have your baby. Uh, she became pregnant. And when she went for a checkup, that tube that was blocked is still blocked. No, I don't think you're hearing me. That tube that was blocked is still blocked, but she's pregnant. Some unusual thing will happen to your life. If you can hear the word, you can follow the word. If you can believe the word, it shall happen in your life. Amen. You know, this African community, most people, and the other, they don't receive from me because I'm down to earth. She said, I've been married for many years, but I don't have a, a child. And now I've been chased from my marriage. It is one month now. I began to laugh. He said, you are laughing. I said, yeah, that's all. Just a child. She, she began to cry. And uh, as she's crying, she said to me, you don't understand. I had cancer. And uh, I was operated. They removed my uterus and my two tubes. So I have no tubes. I have no uterus. So you say it's a small problem. She continued to cry. I joined her. And we cried together. When we finished crying, I'm telling you this, too, you know. When we finished crying, I said, wipe your tears. The God I serve, his name is Yahweh. Amen. Yahweh simply means the self-existent one who is able to do anything from nothing. If you are nothing, you are the candidate of Yahweh to make you something. If you have nothing, Yahweh will make something out of you. You know that name Yahweh, we just call it, oh, when you are in Israel, is Jewish people, they do not mention that name anyhow. That name was a secret, and God told Moses that your parent, your grandparent, the, the Abraham and what, I revealed to them as the Almighty. But my name Yahweh, Jehovah, they did not know. So I'm revealing to you as Jehovah. Are you together with me? When they are writing, when they were writing the scripture, when they go to the word Yahweh, they put the pen down, they go wash their feet, wash their hand, wash their face, and take a new pen to write Yahweh. If in the next line they find Yahweh, put the pen down, wash. And take a new pen to write Yahweh. I say he's a self-existent one. The name of power. I say come to the conference. We have a conference. No cell phones in those days. We go to the, to the conference. I'm sitting. She just come to the platform. She said, I've come. As if it was a war. I say, okay. I look behind, behind it, there was an empty seat there. I said, sit there. He said, no, this is where the speakers are sitting. I said, you say you have come. Sit there now. Somebody say Yahweh. Yahweh. One more time, Yahweh. Yahweh. Hmm. When you know him, you are going to be different. Amen. That's what Paul said that I may know him. We are in church, we know about him. Israel knew about God. Moses knew God. It made a great difference. Can I get an amen? amen? So, as a man of God from South Africa called T.S. Muligwe, they arrived with Musa Sono. 
and the David Tabahali, they just arrived to the fire conference. They picked them straight from the airport and brought them straight to the conference ground. I am coordinating the meeting. I didn't even see when he arrived. And then he, my coordinator came to me and says, uh, Baba Muligwe is already here. So I turn, I say, Baba, welcome. Here's the microphone. He stands up in the pulpit. He say, oh, the Lord has told me there is a woman here without a tube, without uterus. No, I don't think you are getting me. First of all, to join the husband by force. They had already chased her for one month eh? because she was not giving birth. She went back there. Within one month, she became pregnant. No tube. No uterus. I don't think you are hearing me. Yes, Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes. <laughs> and she turned around, you see, here's the seed. And a beautiful baby girl called Sarah, she was standing there. She's now finishing the university in Yaounde. I, you are not hearing what I'm yes. saying. I serve the living God by the name of Jesus. Whatever trouble in your life is, by the death of Jesus, I destroy anything that is there to destroy your life in Jesus' mighty name. Hey. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Let me give you one last one before I preach. <laughs> Sorry, we have 30 minutes left. We are in. We are. <laughs> we are. Oh, that, oh, how do you remember that? That's one I wanted just to say. <laughs> we, 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 we are in the conference. And in the Django Village, for those who know in Cameroon, the bush all over. And I'm on the pulpit. A big snake comes out from the bush and started coming to, to where the people are. And there was one diplomat from uh, uh, Embassy of Congo in Yaounde who was sitting on the last uh, row there. And the, the women that do protocol, they are here with their table for tea and so forth to serve to the speakers. Two of them they see the snake coming and they got paralyzed. They cannot shout snake. They cannot say anything. They remain with their cup. I think one of them even dropped the cup according to what they told me. And they are looking at it. They cannot shout. They cannot say anything. And the snake kept on coming. And the moment the head of the snake touched the platform where we were seated, the snake began to dry. Oh, I don't think you are hearing me. The snake began to dry. dry. And they were watching it. So when I finished, they just showed me a dry snake. Every snake in your life Amen. shall dry. Amen. Shall dry. Shall dry. Because Jesus came in the flesh. And he died. yesterday was the anniversary of the death of Jesus. It is not the Friday tomorrow. According to the Bible calendar of God, it was yesterday, the 14th day of Nisan, where Jesus died. Jesus died for everything that is unbooking your life to die in the name of Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. Whatever hand that is upon your life to make your life miserable is going to dry. Amen. I say it's going to dry. Amen. I say it's going to dry. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say faithful God. Faithful God. Sit down. Rebecca Satala. Mulopweka Nabesa. So let me give you two examples of people that saw and their life, their environment change. 